Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about some networking stuff that I have here. And uh, some of you have asked about the networking, how I have some things set up. And I want to just briefly talk about PFSense for a second here as well. And um, this is, I know, a different setup than you're used to seeing. Uh, this is actually where my networking hub happens to be. And uh, what we actually have going on right here is I keep this separate from the rest of the office. It's kind of more in a centralized area. And uh, I do that so that I can keep these particular devices out of the main office because these devices always stay on. The office devices, even the power switches, all get shut off at the end of the workday. And so this is kind of set up as like the central brain of the office network. Now this keyboard and um, monitor is not usually here. Um, I had to come in here and do some maintenance on the PFSense router. And uh, I know a lot of you guys are interested in some of the things going on with PFSense. So I want to give you, um, just do a couple of little timestamps here. First we'll talk a little bit about the network and then we'll talk a little bit about PFSense. So first onto the network. So the way I have my network configured, um, of course um, this part down here is actually contains my NAS, which is over here, my router, which is a Fitlet PC, and I have the modem over there. So of course, um, I am on um, Comcast's system there. So let me go ahead and switch this so I can spin that a little easier. So my modem down here is just a simple Aris surfboard uh, docs, is it 3.0, 3.1? I think it's a 3.1, I forget. Uh, it, it just gets me, you know, as much internet speed as I happen to need down here. Uh, and then, of course, we have down here, this is the PFSense router. So this is built out of a Fitlet PC. We have the, uh, the top here is actually the heat sink top. Just kind of helps keep the thing a little bit cool. And uh, what all we have plugged into this guy on a regular basis um, the main internet comes onto the port in the back. So this particular one has the network card in it, so there's four ports. And this is a, a, gigabit, uh, a gigabit ports in here, so it's a gigabit router setup. This guy in the front is the keyboard. As soon as I'm done with the video here today, that goes away because I don't need it here. And then of course the one back here is the monitor, which again goes away uh, because I don't need that. We have a wireless card here. Now, the reason when you're using PFSense the reason you are uh, wanting to have a wireless access point instead of using a network card like I'm using here is because BSD does not actually support wireless cards well. I only get like BGN um, network capability on that, which is not particularly good in 2019. However, it does serve my purposes for what I have, and that's actually only one of two network uh, ports that I have on the on the network. So. Uh, frankly, it does its job, and I don't use a lot of things with the wireless network anyway, so it serves my needs. Of course, we have the power line, and then we have three, port, uh, three network uh, ports up here. So, again, the one comes in from the internet. The gray line back here goes back into the office where it triggers off of a, an 8-port gigabit switch, which is where all my office computers run from. The middle one here goes into the NAS, which is this computer over here. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then the front one actually runs on a CAT6. That goes downstairs where it attaches to a Linksys E1000 router, which I have configured as a wireless access point. Now again, why do I do that instead of getting a better wireless access point? Simply because I don't use a lot of wireless stuff in the house. The occasional phone, the occasional laptop, that's really about it. And I'm not exactly on, on either a lot. So I don't really need more than that. And so for me, just repurposing that Linksys router was good enough. And then that also gives me a hardline network port to plug into the Raspberry Pi, which is downstairs uh, in front of the television as well. So uh, that's kind of what we have going on there. Now, of course, I have the video build on the NAS uh, on another video. And uh, this is, the NAS is basically configured out of a Dell uh, micro tower, which is, this is hilarious. The router uses more power than the computer. <laughs> okay, that's kind of hilarious. The router takes more power down here than the computer and the modem combined. Um, I've done power testing on all this. But this guy here is just a mini tower. Now what I did is, this is a DVD drive at the top, which I did not need. 
So it's not plugged in. It's still there, just basically keep dust out of the machine. Um, I've taken the I've taken the DVD drive out and I've taken the regular size hard drive out and I've replaced it with two laptop hard drives that are put together in a RAID 1 so they are a mirror image of each other. So if one of them fails, I have one backup drive. This is my central NAS that runs all my backup servers, all my backup files, backup dumps go to this computer, um, and it also runs media servers, media sharers, and an ebook server. All runs on this computer, which is totally awesome because I bought the thing for 100 bucks at an open book sale. They're like, oh, we don't have a power adapter. I'm like, dude, you knocked the price down to 100, go ahead and do it. Joke was on them, I had a power adapter in the house already that would work with it that I didn't need. So that was kind of cool. So that's kind of what this system is here. Um, so that's the, that's the NAS. So this stuff always stays on that's down here. And then, like I said, the monitor that's up here, that actually is usually attached to my, um, to the other computer. That's the secondary monitor for my other computer. And so that is just briefly about the network setup. Now, uh, I put the monitor up here because I was doing some maintenance on PFSense. Here's some advantages and some disadvantages of PFSense. They give you the ability to update it from the web GUI on PFSense. Don't ever do it. It always crashes your uh, PFSense build. Um, so what you always want to do is when it comes time to upgrade your PFSense, come in here, attach a keyboard and a monitor to your device. And I think it's 13, um, number, option number 13 on the panel here is update from the console. Running the update from this console upgrades the system. So I'm now running PSSense 2.4.4 uh, release patch 2, which is the most current version of this, just actually released uh, a couple of days ago. And so, I think a couple of days ago anyway. Um, so when you attempt to update it from the web GUI instead, it seems to want to download and try and install the update on top of the boot partition and it crashes the boot partition. So you don't ever want to upgrade PSSense from your GUI. Always, always, always do it here. But before you do it, in the GUI, there is a place to make a backup configuration. What that's going to do is it makes an XML file of all of your system settings all of them. It takes that thing, downloads one little file, and then if you ever have a problem with your system, you can actually reinstall your router with that XML file present and it will have your entire system back up in less than five minutes. Okay, so, um, and uh, here's why I upgraded from the console here. I was like, I, I, the first time I tried to upgrade my PFSense router, it crashed the whole thing. Fortunately, I had a backup, so it's like, oh boy, because it took me about a week to build the thing out the first time. I'm like, oh god, it's going to take a week, oh, you know. But I was lucky I had that backup, and I installed it. I was like, wow, that happened really quick. I wonder if it always is that quick. I really just didn't know. And so it came time today to run the updates, and uh, the thing wanted the updates, and it's like, well, maybe that was a one-off thing, but just in case, let's go ahead and make a backup of the files. So I made a backup of the files. Everything is all backed up on the system. Hit the web GUI. Once again, crashed the entire system down. So this time I was prepared. I already had my backup copy of PFSense, which was actually only the uh, uh, patch one, not the patch two. So it was slightly out of date from what I downloaded today. And then I had my XML file. So when you get that on your PFSense router, Put your image on one of your USB drives to install from, this is your installation image, and then grab a XML file and drop it on a secondary USB. And then what I did is I came in and I plugged both of these drives into PFSense, so attempting to update from the web GUI, crashes the whole thing, come over, like, oh boy, plug in the keyboard, plug in the monitor, boot the thing up, it's like, yeah, there's no, nothing to boot here. Well, like, well, there's nothing in the boot partition. So I was like, all right, so, Download your image, put this in, download your XML file, put this in, put both of your drives in simultaneously. Boot it into the, um, the bootloader and just kind of told it to boot off of the restore image. And when you click the installation, the first thing in the installation step, it's going to hunt through anything else for an XML file. If it finds the XML file and it is a backup configuration for PFSense, 
It will not ask you anything else. It simply grabs the file and it reinstalls PFSense exactly to the configuration of your system. Now, the only other thing you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to go in there and you're going to re-enable any plugins that you have or what they call packages. Now, you do not have to reconfigure them. The packages will be reinstalled and as you reinstall the packages, all of that information is also saved in the XML. So the process to reinstall your PFSense is grab your image, grab your XML, plug them in, boot off the image, it will automatically reinstall PFSense exactly to the specs of the XML file, and then go in, reinstall your packages, and everything is set. So that is how easy it is to run PFSense. Now you should be running your updates on these to make sure that your security, your router is that first line of defense into your home. Whether you have a store-bought router or you're running a custom thing like PFSense, you wanna make sure that you're running those security patches. Just make sure if you're doing PFSense, have those backup XML files. It's really gonna save you a lot of headaches later. Uh, very easy to, to do. And uh, ultimately though, guys, avoid that web GUI. Don't, don't even, it says, oh, we need to update the thing. Don't even try and do it from your web portal. Come over to your system, plug in a, a keyboard, plug in a monitor, and update at number 13 on the console. It'll update flawlessly, it'll reboot the system, and everything's gonna be working perfectly for you. So definitely that's how you're gonna to wanna to run your system. So let me know the other things you guys wanna know about PFSense in the comments down below. I know several of you guys are actually really watching those PFSense videos I did, and I, I mean, I don't even remember uh, all of the uh, details of those. I'll have to watch those again. Some of the things I want to show you guys how to do is how to run your um, net blocker so that you can block your advertising, your tracking, all that kind of stuff, uh, including a custom block list like I run on mine. Um, I also want to show you how to set up VPNs and, and things like that. So let me know the other things you'd be interested in um, on your uh, PFSense build, and I will do some more videos about that in the future. So thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to FreeBSD. <laughs> Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.